Underwood. Thin Ice! <laughs> To smoke some weed and shut up. My God. Oh, that's not for sure. There it is. Boom! Yes! <laughs> okay, uh, Atlanta Basketball Podcast, episode 183, December 12th, 2023. Uh, what's today? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. All right, there we I go. I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, I got there. Um, <laughs> Sounds right. Yeah, uh, episode 183. Uh, shout out to Armchair Line at armchairline.com. Uh, I think Ant Wright did a spaces at the half during this previous game, and I think Armchair was in there. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just completely made that up, but I don't know. Yeah, I think they've done that a few times. Yeah, I thought I saw something with that at, uh, at the half of this game. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, armchairline.com. You can check out all the stuff over there. Also, some football stuff. If you want to see some more about uh, that uh, Italian quarterback, you could you know check that out as well. Um, I think Brett Bielema is uh, going to be on uh, Sports Center tonight to discuss the Italian quarterback. By the way, oh, this really? guy, you know, he willingly lived in Champaign, Illinois, seven months ago. So shout out to him, you know. Uh, and, and Illinois should be able to claim him because Syracuse benched him. He came to Illinois. He would beat Illinois right there. He would have played Illinois li- this season if the NCAA didn't deny his waiver. Speaking of denying waivers, former line I Adam Miller, uh, I think the longer denied. that went on, yeah. I thought that he was going to get it. I said early in the season, I had heard from, you know, a couple people, you know, a couple people that that I thought he was going to get it. He didn't get it. And I think whoever convinced Adam Miller to leave Illinois screwed him over. Um, and it's unfortunate. You know, I obviously there's always a player on a team that I defend to no end. He was kind of that guy that year. Uh, he started every game in Illinois as a freshman. Um, and it's unfortunate that his career has gone this way. Obviously, he goes to LSU, tears his ACL. Uh, then plays on an LSU team that was just horrific. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, and I think the NCAA waiver process is a joke because there's guys that aren't getting waivers that should be getting waivers, and there's guys getting waivers that shouldn't be getting waivers. Typical NCAA crock of SHIT, how there's no regulation, no rhyme or reason to anything they're doing. Yeah. Uh, but either way, speaking of the NCAA, NCAA basketball, the 2023-2024 NCAA basketball season featured the first CBS game of the year with uh, somehow people, and probably, I'm, I'm just going to say Illini fans, found a way to complain about Bill Raftery and and uh, and Jay Wright on the call. Like, shut the hell up, guys, okay? <laughs> I, I, I listened to it. I didn't think that they were one-sided. I, my dad texted me during the game and said that they were very ten- pro-Tennessee, so... Oh, I, I don't know just, because I, just, I, w- I was actually at the game. So okay, here's the problem. Here's that. the problem. I think there is something to the idea that the home team gets a little bit. You know, I think the home team gets like a 55-45 split sure. uh, when w- with the announcer. I understand but that. Jay Wright seems – Jay Wright uh, – I think we talked about this last year. Jay Wright loves Coleman Hawkins. He talks about it all the time. The Ohio State game last year, he wouldn't shut up about how much he liked, liked Coleman Hawkins. They talk about how much they like Shannon. Like, it's Bill Raftery. We should be – thankful that he's still that calling he's still games going. at this age and he still yeah. sounds great yeah. uh he anybody who thinks dickie v is better no 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 shot at dickie v kind of is but anybody who thinks dickie v is better than bill raftery is an insane oh. person when was the last time dickie v actually broke down a basketball play instead of just yelling it's just it's what it is what it is it's ridiculous like complaining about the announcements game insane 86 right. 79 illinois loses by seven uh yeah, there's a lot to think about from this game. We wanted to do this as quickly as possible, but did. obviously, it didn't uh, work out that way. It's, it's uh, Tyler's fault, not mine. But we're here on a Tuesday, and they don't play for five days. So yeah, um, one to three under the bus, real quick. And you know, you, you talk about blame monologues. Me you That's fine. You're you you're about, lucky that I'm here today, honestly. So <laughs> we we are all uh, you know grateful, right? Uh, so yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you want to talk about SNL monologue type stuff? Holy there was my God, opening right. monologue for everybody. Let's get into the game. There's already a bunch of comments in here. I don't think there are plenty. I, I don't think that there is a reason to complain about the announcers in this game. Um, I thought the play-by-play guy wasn't great because I'm just kind of used to you know it being Jim Nance, which I guess Jim Nance is done with college basketball, right? So, um, well, you're the announcer guy. I'm pretty sure he is. I, I feel like that didn't that happen last year? Remember, it was like <clears throat> Jim Nance's last Final Four and. Houston yeah, and all this right. stuff, even though Houston right. did lose in the uh, Sweet 16 to Miami. So maybe maybe I'm just making everything up. I don't know. But uh, Illinois loses to Tennessee. 
I'm exhausted already, but good work. Uh, yeah, so uh, as you guys know, we went to the game. I did take cards this time, so I spread the word of Lion Eye Basketball Podcast. So if you're new here and I met you, it's nice to meet you. Uh, I met Hinkle. Uh, Hinkle was down there for the game. <clears throat> Got to meet him. I My voice is still kind of here and there. Uh, we did some yelling. Um, Tennessee people, super nice people. Um, everybody welcomed us when we came in. Uh, we were chanting ILL, I and I throughout the uh, concourse, and they were still nice to us. Um, and then they were even nicer, of course, when they beat us. So uh, shout out to uh, Tennessee fans. Nice fans. But uh, yeah, uh, it was a good trip. And um, the only thing that sucked is Illinois lost. Uh, comments are flooding in. So I guess. live viewer comments show up on StreamYard. This is an I example. Guess, Click on comments, mean. show it on screen. We start going through there. Uh, Jeffrey, I don't know if this is odds or not. Maybe he changed his stuff. Maybe he didn't. Um, he's ready to vent. MJ, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, Jay says the positive from this game is Illinois can still compete even while Shannon and Marcus have bad games and still competed while the home court cooking refs were terrible. Felt like we were at Iowa. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it. And Brat says what's going on. Hey, Brat, what's up? Refs weren't that bad. They weren't that bad. They weren't that good, <clears throat> in my opinion. Uh, announcers flow with the home team five taking them over every now and then. And that's in Brat's thoughts. So I just think that we need, as a society, we need to stop complaining about announcers so much. I think it's pretty clear who sucks and who doesn't. And I can guarantee you that Jay Wright and Bill Raftery are great together, no matter what the what the game is. Like, yeah. if you want to hear two guys that know basketball, two guys that have been around the game for a long time, <laughs> one guy that's won two national championships in the last six years, like these guys know basketball. I don't think they have any motive to be like, oh, we like Tennessee so much more than Illinois. Like. First of all, our orange is far superior to their orange. That's number <laughs> one. Um, number two, one person that pissed me off during this game was Rick Barnes. But guess what? He's just a coach doing a co what coaches do. I just don't yeah. like that. Like in the midst of the well, in the midst of the flow of like Tennessee getting like five calls in a row, um, Rick Barnes is, is standing up complaining, wanting more. And it's like, dude, sit down. Yeah, um, sit down, you old f. Is what I wanted <laughs> to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wesley says, uh, Jim Nance, it might only be done with final fours. Who knows? Whatever. Um, <clears throat> Jeffrey says, whoever made the call to wear orange going to Tennessee instead of blue should be friggin' fired on the spot. That's fair. I thought, I think it's outrageous that they wore orange at Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, um, Ryan says, if you told me before the road trip, we'd be two and one, blow it out the rack, beat FAU in a great game and lose to Tennessee by single digits, I would have been ecstatic. I think I think that's a good attitude to have. I mean, Illinois moved up four spots and they lost the game this week. So, Lunker says Tennessee defended better and made more shots. Holy cow, guys, calm down. Um, <clears throat> Jeffrey, where do you go after the game? Where did you go after the game? Uh, Old Town, I th I believe. I don't know. We went to some sports bar that had nobody there but Illinois fans, and by nobody there, I mean. It was us and then like 10 other Illinois fans. So <clears throat> I didn't really, I don't really know the area, um, but I believe it was called Old Old City, maybe. Uh, Lunker says it was rough to watch in the second half. Hopefully, our game at Michigan State is on CBS. Old City says mad speeding. <clears throat> Lunkers says at halftime, I thought we could play with them. Tennessee also got all the calls. Yeah. I mean, Illinois was up at half. <clears throat> One of the guys with us was mad that they were up at half because they thought that they wouldn't play as hard in the second half. So anyways, uh, as we always do, our player of the game, our pogs, uh, we're throwing them out there. I went with Quincy Garrier, uh, probably his best game in a line eye uniform all year, all yeah, whatever. Um, 33 minutes, 22 points, 7 for 14 from the field, 3 of 8 from 3. He made his first two threes, um, which was nice to see. Then uh, Illinois just kind of started shooting them, and nobody could. I can already tell I'm going to get really mad today. Uh-oh. 5 of 7 from the line, 5 rebounds. Um, I, I felt like towards the end, Underwood went to Quincy – Pretty consistently, kind of like how he does when Damas was playing well or Terrence Shannon's playing well. I believe Quincy had Adu on him a lot towards the end. 
if I remember correctly, I it would it's been a long time since that. Uh a lot of never mind. Uh I I and it, he even brought the ball up the court. So um yeah, I went with Quincy. I was happy with how he played. Um three of eight. Uh yeah, I'm I assuming that I can't see the comments right now because I'm on banners, but I assume people are going after you picking Coleman Hawkins. Is that what's happening? No, but oh, okay. But it might happen. <laughs> it might happen. I think it's the people crying already about the number of threes they took, but we'll get there. Um, and by the way, the whole refs thing, I, I do want to push back a little bit on that. I think if you look at the if you take a step back and look at the numbers, they were pretty even, but I also think that you have to think about the call and the flow of the game and when the calls were made because the hook and hold thing was insane. And unfortunately, that's just like a rule issue, I think. Um, yeah, because there's I, nothing flagrant about that play. That's the problem that I. So have. there, so the, that's one thing I will say about Tennessee. They're at the TBA is their replays are brutal. Like I, you, any replay they showed, you couldn't tell if it the the view they gave was worse than what we saw up in the 852 second row. So um, I have no clue how that play looked. All I know is that. Illinois was up seven coming out of that half hook and hold on tie. Uh, and it seemed like <clears throat> connect kind of got a few calls where he just flew his head back and, and they called something. Um, there were a few there that were kind of weird. And then all of a sudden it was like a one point game. And then I think Tennessee went on a 10 0 run and it just kind of stayed there the whole time. So uh, I, I felt like they changed the flow, as you said, of the game. I'm not so sure they were bad. I mean, free throws were pretty even. There were six difference. <clears throat> Brad said something about they. there were three fouls in the first half and there were 467 in the second half, which I agree with because there were three fouls. I think Illinois fouled, had their fourth foul, and which they did on purpose. Um, and then they came out in the first four and a half minutes, they got six fouls called on them. So, yeah, I think it changed the flow of the game. I, for Illinois not to be able to come back because of that is, I mean, that's more on Illinois than it is on the refs, in my opinion. But anyway, it is, it is what college basketball is. I feel like that happens all the time. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, um, I picked Coleman Hawkins. Coleman Hawkins, twelve points. Uh, what else did he do? Uh, thirty-six minutes, four for thirteen from the field. That's not great. Three for ten for three. That's not great. Uh, but him and Quincy coming out and making them was important. Um. One for two from the free throw line, 12 points, four rebounds, four assists, two steals. Uh, I think teams probably are very, very okay with him shooting 10 threes. I don't think we are. Yeah. I The Tennessee fans around me were so happy every time he put up a shot. They're like, shoot it. Go ahead. Shoot it. And I was just... It's not that bad, but it's and not. And he did, make, he did make one when they did it. And I'm like, yeah, shoot it. You know, me um, being an Illinois fan. Uh, and I was I was hoping that I could have done that to him more, but I didn't. I wasn't able to. So, but yeah, 10 threes is crazy. But who didn't shoot 10 threes for Illinois this game? <laughs> yeah. So uh Brad said Brad was happy with the looks they got. I mean, he said that uh Luke had really good looks, Coleman had really good looks, Harmon shot two wide open threes, he missed both of them. Um, and he said, basically, if you're going to get them, you got to make them. So I, you know, Brad wasn't mad that Coleman shot 10 threes or any part, part of them. So, um, Brad also said, quote, Coleman is a unique player. There aren't many like him in the country. The fact that he can shoot, he can drive it. He is a connector. He can handle the ball at an elite level. And defensively, he's one of the best guys in America. By the way, he got a BS call on him too. Um, Looked like all ball, at least from where we were. It definitely was. Yeah, the rep didn't even see the ball. The yeah. ref that called that. Um, he said that he Underwood said that he has to do a better job of incorporating him and Dane in the game together, and it said that Dane played really well in his absent. Coleman is a very, very valuable, very talented player. I think we will see plenty of Coleman and Dane together in this next game, given the length that Colgate has. Yeah, well, and I think that he. he Brad's going to have to try to figure that out too. I mean, get them both on. I was kind of shocked when I saw Dane only played four minutes in this game. Cause I feel like Coleman can get the ball to Dane um, in the post a little bit more 
it, more ways to do it than some of the guards. Because obviously seeing over and, you know, trying those really dumb passes that sometimes work out and sometimes don't. Um, but I don't really see a problem with the way Coleman played overall. I think he was fine. Um, I think there were some spots defensively. That call where he knocked the ball out was a ridiculous call. Like that, you can't get more ball than he got there. Yeah. Um, that was insane. But I, I think there's a reason a guy like Jay Wright, who's one of the best coaches probably ever, uh, likes Coleman Hawkins so much is because he can do so many different things. So I find it interesting that these uh, these hillbillies that live in the middle of nowhere that watch basketball <laughs> on a 32-inch TV uh, think that Coleman is – I'm going to say that 90% of the people around me did a no ball. So I, I, I thought go. it was it was funny listening to him, honestly. I mean um, – And we were surrounded I, by Illinois fans too, shockingly. Can I like, say a curse word real quick? Ten, yeah, sure. You're from fucking Tennessee. You're dumb as shit already. Let's be honest. <laughs> You're from the Midwest. You're probably stupid. This just yeah. is what it is. Um, but hey, yeah, very nice though. Very that's nice. exactly what the Midwest is—a bunch of dipshits who are nice. I mean, let's, <laughs> can, we, can we be honest for a second? That's Most of you people root for the fucking Chicago Bears. I mean, that's <laughs> embarrassing enough. Well, as one, is. It, um, that's two cuss words. Calm down. Well, guess what? Let's be honest. It's 2023. If you can't hear cursing. Don't fucking listen to podcasts. Like, don't okay. watch, Like, I, I don't understand. Like, you, I'm not even going to go where I was about to go next because we might not have a podcast if I did that. So, right. uh, on to the starters. Yeah. Uh, I also was going to say, I think Adu had about 10 fouls in this game. Just want to throw that out there. So, yeah. Well, uh, do you want to? Go through these nine billion comments. Yeah, and, that would be uh, great. I probably right. just offended everybody. Right. I apologize if so. <laughs> Actually, uh, no. Jeff says I think Brad lost the game. He got out coached. Does Brad think he's got an NBA team? I don't know what that this means. is. What annoys me because yeah, it's like, oh, they shot all these that. threes. They look like an NBA team with the way they're playing. They, they can just shoot all these threes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that's that's what they were given. Uh, Coleman talked about it a lot. I talked about it in the pregame. That's what Tennessee makes you do. You have to make threes against them. They take away driving lanes. They fill gaps. They're, you can't get into the lane against them. And the refs weren't calling anything at, at, at the basket, at least when Illinois was taking it to the hoop, it, it seemed like. so. You also have to look at like how long Jonas Adu and Josiah Jordan-James and Vescovy and Ziegler and Maychak, like all of those guys have been at Tennessee for a while. Like yeah. they've all played under Rick Barnes for a long time. This is the way they play. And you had to think Tennessee with the way they played recently against good opponents, they were going to come out firing in this game. And yeah. Illinois stuck with them mainly because some of the threes were falling early. Uh, but Tennessee, make no mistake, don't even look at how many points they gave up to North Carolina. This team, when they're on, they're one of the harder teams to yeah. score against in the country. I mean, Tennessee's game plan in this was if Illinois is going to beat us, they're going to have to make 18 of 36 threes or you know what i mean not that many but still i know they had a lot of free throws but we can't complain about scoring 79 against tennessee when shannon and damask don't really have it for most of the game i mean and that's what i mean this was a free throw heavy game the 28 for illinois and 34 shot for tennessee so that's why the score got up there so high um tennessee was on score to on pace score 100 and then illinois held them to like nine points over the next 11 minutes so uh ryan says there was something in, about this loss at tennessee that reminded me too much of last year's team nope i don't I see so. it i i think the only reason people would say that is because they shot 36 threes but guess what the, the last year's team gets destroyed in this game i think i don't think that the last year's team is going to be able to stick around and you could say yeah they came back against ucla they came back against tennessee but ucla or against texas ucla and texas really didn't play very well. I thought Tennessee played pretty well. Like other than the final 10 minutes of the first half, Tennessee played a pretty pretty uh pretty good basketball game overall. Um but I don't think you can compare this game, this performance from this team to last year's team at all. I think last year's team sinks a lot quicker. Uh you think Illinois looked tired, hang over from the FAU game? Uh eh, I don't know. They had 36 points in the first half led by two. Yeah. And got nothing from Damask and really nothing from Shannon in the first half. So I feel like I think that's an excuse to say they look tired. I don't think they look tired. Uh, Wesley said he couldn't watch, uh, could only listen. Was the hook and hold as bad as Twitter made it seem? 
That's bad of a call. I think by rule, I guess they made the right call. But like, there's there's my the problem. Nobody fell to the ground. There was no blatant pulling or anything. Like, there's nothing flagrant about that. I mean, it looked like Ty just outmanned him. Honestly, if you're if you're gonna call anything, they're fine. Call a a foul. But there's nothing flagrant about that. It's the stupid Isaac Haas rule that just ruined basketball. Yeah. Uh, Jeff says, how can we get boards when all we do is run isolated plays? No freaking offense. Sick of it. <clears throat> Nobody moves. The word I- friggin' is very Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I agree that Illinois offense has seemed to lo- lose a lot of flow lately, but again, Tennessee's defense is, is going to force that. Tennessee so, is going to turn your offense into something chaotic. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing was, is Illinois didn't get rebounds. <clears throat> uh, it just seemed like, you know, Vescovy would find something or, you know, all the guys from Tennessee would seem to find balls and Illinois couldn't get out and run. And that's that's a big part of Illinois' game is they got to get out and run. Um, and they, they weren't able to do that in this game. Uh, and Brad says that flagrant change to the game. How often does the Illini basketball go eight days without a game? Seems rare to me. I think that's they seven I think days. Once, once a year. I think they do it once a year. I think it's um, happened twice this year. Okay. They Remember do. before the Rutgers game, Western Illinois to Rutgers was – That's true, yeah. I guess that was six days. But either way, six or seven days, it's happened several times. Never eight uh, days, which is which is not – this seven. So. Jay says, Phantom Hook and Hold changed the game. Jeff, and what the hell is Dane only getting four minutes for? I don't know why Dane only got four minutes. I, I don't I, think I, – I don't – I mean, if we can be honest, though, on the offensive side, I don't think Dane's given him anything in this game. Um, I just – I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong thought. I don't even remember his four minutes. I know he had two points, took two shots, had three rebounds, so that is true. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I feel like in the flow of the game, Coleman gets 36. Gary Egg is 33. They had Goody out there for 23 minutes, probably wanting him to make some shots. Um but I do think it's a little weird that Dane got so – I just think that the way the game was flowing, Brad never saw another spot to put him back in, I guess. I don't know. But he did – that's a good point. He had two offensive rebounds in four minutes. <laughs> yeah. Were they I literally don't – though. I literally don't remember him playing at all, so I feel like he had zero. But whatever, he did too. I feel, like, I feel like they were both misses back to himself. Sure, Which, why not? Well, he missed wrong. one shot. He missed one shot. I think tickets for the Michigan State game that were bought by Michigan State people have been returned and available. Yeah, they were doing a stocking stuffer, a buy one, get one free to the Michigan State game. So Michigan State sucks. If you feel bad about Illinois right now, yeah, check out Michigan State. They're going to make uh, the tournament. Die by the three, die by the three, says Anthony. Uh, Jay, need more from Rogers. Got got to score a little bit and put up a few shots. Can't play four versus five on offense. I agree. Um, I th- I think that people are really big on this. Illinois still doesn't have a point guard or whatever. I, I thought Illinois handled the pressure pretty good. I'm kind of pissed off that Brad didn't run more pressure against Tennessee because when Illinois ran pressure, Tennessee struggled. Um, I think Damas turned it over once against Ziegler, who literally was just harassing the man. I mean, he's five he foot nine, so they let him do whatever he wants. Yeah, they just let him slap like crazy. Um, but Illinois had nine turnovers this game against one of the best defenses in the country. Yeah. So I not having the only guy that had multiple turnovers was Damask, who they were hounding. And also, yeah, like and I would like to see Ty have more than three rebounds, but I also think there's something to the fact that Illinois is probably not running a ton of offense because they like who do they want to initiate that? Um I don't think t- I just I I'm so sick of the point guard thing already. Like this team seven and two, <laughs> uh, they haven't they've been much better against pressure in recent. Like also I agree that they should have pressured Tennessee more because I think if you look at what if you ask the question, what kind of personnel do I want to run pressure? I want six six Terrence Shannon, six six Ty Rogers, six six Marcus Damask, six ten Coleman Hawkins who's versatile, and then Quincy Gary who's six eight. That's a group of guys that can pressure hard. So I think they should have done it more, especially against, you know, smaller guards that Tennessee has in comparison to Illinois, which would be Ziegler and Vescovy. So 
And of course, Vescovy comes out and makes that stupid three in the corner, oh, falling away. away. That was, I mean, that was, I think it was a seven point game at that point and no time left on the shot clock, I think. And yeah, that off a rebound. I can't remember. And the other one, the other backbreaker was when Connect flailed, didn't get a call, and somehow the ball bounces back to him. He knocks down a three. Connect <laughs> is, is like, He's so good, but there's times where it looks like he's just not good. I guess that happens to everybody, but there's like yeah. when he drives to the rim like that, like I don't know who's stopping that. Right. Yeah. It's similar to Shannon, except I think he's probably a bit more sure handed at the rim if he's not dunking it. Like I trust him to make, you know, some of those layups over guys more than Shannon because I think Shannon can get a little out of control. Connect really doesn't do that. Um, but his shot's also pretty ugly too, but he's just very good. So I don't know what you do. <laughs> yeah. Um, Schlagboy said he's always here for Ethan's rant. So. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Jeff is complaining about Brad some more. Yeah, I just, the, 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 I just, <laughs> have we not? Okay. Number there one, no offense. It's hard to adjust in a game like this. I think it really is. Like, none of us have coached. What do we know? I feel like when you're playing a team like Tennessee, Tennessee probably adjusts right back. And if you're Illinois, you're just like, we got to try to ride our horses here. Gary is having a good game. Let him play 30 plus. Let him keep going after it. Luke Goody's our shooter. He had two air balls in this game. I don't know how often that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, but that was crazy. How many games we also talked about where Brad did make an adjustment and they won the game in the second half? Like Northwestern, one of those two games, I, whether it's last season or the couple of years before where they came back, I'm pretty positive adjustments were made. Like, what I wonder about people who complain about making no adjustments, can you guys identify the adjustments? Like if he made a subtle adjustment, are you going to be able to identify that? I just don't understand why we criticize coaches for not making adjustments. I don't think Illinois in the second half could really make an adjustment that stood out because of the foul calls. Right. There's and so it, many I, foul calls. There's no flow I mean, to a game like that. You lost by seven at Tennessee. You know, I mean, Brad's never. It's just, not like they got the, beat by twenty. That is one of the biggest problems in sports media in any sport is that we jump to conclusions so heavily after one performance or one game. If there was a trend of Brad not getting to the tournament of Illinois and struggling in Big Ten play, there's been the opposite of that. What the hell is John Gross here? Brad Underwood has done nothing but win games in the Big Ten, and you fucking guys keep complaining about Brad Underwood and what he is as a coach. Why are we doing this? Why? He's done nothing but win games here. What did John Gross do? Did nothing but lose games here. What has Brad Underwood done recruiting? Oh, he's gone out in the recruiting drill. He's got some good players. Sorry it didn't work out with Epps and Clark. They obviously weren't built to be here. You look at a guy like Sincere Harris, that's a culture guy. You look at a guy like Ty Rogers, who didn't shoot anything. Zero field goal attempts in this game. Wants to play, wants to be here, doesn't want to be more than what he is, plays his role. Terrence Shannon's bought in. Terrence Shannon played multiple years at Texas Tech under Chris Beard. That is a school that has a structure and a culture. At least they did under Beard. And then he leaves, and it was a disaster under Mark Adams. That doesn't count here. What more do you want for Brad Underwood right now in this very moment? They can't get to the Sweet 16 right now. It's December. I don't know what more we want, and I'm going to give myself a headache, but it's just so annoying <laughs> that time and time again, people come in here and complain about the coach when the coach has done nothing but do a complete 180 with this program, and they're re we're relevant again, winning games the Big Ten. I mean, do you want me to pull up the Big Ten record over the last few years? I mean, they've done nothing. They're one of the winningest teams in the Big Ten over the last three years. Last season's team, not very good, right? 11 and 9 in the Big Ten. That's over 500, especially when the Big Ten was not too bad last year. Uh, this year's a different story. 15 and 5 the year before that. Is that good enough for you guys? Is that good enough? Uh, 16 and 4 the year before that in the Big Ten. Is that is that is that cutting it? Is that uh, you know you like that? 13 and 7 the year before that COVID year. That team wasn't that good either. They were just learning how to win. Still go 13 and 7 in the Big Ten. So I don't know what more you guys want. I really don't. Hey hey Jeffrey, it's fucking December, dude. You can't win games in the NCAA tournament right now you're saying you can't be an elite coach because they lost by seven at Tennessee on the road whether he's an elite coach has nothing to do with the tournament right now because it's December yes they've had some tournament issues in the past but you know what else happened running into bad matchups I know it's not an excuse like they probably should have they were a better team than Loyola Chicago on paper they just 
it's probably a bad matchup because the Loyola exposed the shit out of them. And Houston was really good a couple years ago, and, and last year's team had no shot against Arkansas. So, like, matchups have to matter at some point. It's not all about wins and losses. I know at the end of the day, I guess it is, but yeah. there has to be context to why they lost. So I just, I mean, they're two and three in the tournament. That's really not that bad when you think about it. <laughs> My neck hurts. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, Wesley said Tennessee and Marquette are two of the best teams you'll see. Lost to both by seven, and one was on the road. Besides Purdue, I think this bodes well for Big Ten play. Um, Ryan says, Wesley, I agree. The only downside is that Purdue is probably going to be our only other chance for a signature win beating FAU at MSG is great, but you would like to have either Marquette or Tennessee. I think that Illinois moved up to like in the, I mean, way too soon predictions. They're like ranked. They're a three right now. So I don't think there's a lot of signature quote unquote win opportunities for anybody with how insane like Arizona and Purdue. Weird. And yeah. yeah, like even I think a signature win though, like, if if Illinois goes to Wisconsin, um, yeah. or like if they went at Ohio State, like I feel like those would be pretty uh, pretty serious wins. Those are two, you know, Wisconsin. If they do something like go fifteen and five in the Big Ten, like like not gonna matter. Regardless yeah. of signature wins, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the Big Ten, the Big Ten this year. Yikes. Um, Jason says uh, feels to me against good teams less than twenty five three pointer. Three point attempts equals a W. Do I you agree. Guys expect them to score with more two point opportunities in this game. Like I don't know. Like that's not a sure thing. I, yeah, I like Damas couldn't make anything inside, and I, I mean Damas even had that comment after the last game. Some days you have it, some days you don't. That's basketball. Like that, that's the way it goes. I think um, they should have had him post up more. I think that I've preached plenty on this podcast that I wish Illinois would shoot less than thirty threes every game. So. I'm kind of in that boat. I agree. Hey Jeffrey. With that. Hey Jeffrey. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, they're 25th in the country. They're shooting 57% from two, and they're shooting a full percentage, maybe two percentage points, uh, better from three. So uh, I don't know what your definition of one dimensional is, but I think Illinois can score from inside the arc or outside the arc. I think they have multiple guys who can drive to the rim and score. I think they have multiple guys who have made backdoor cuts and scored, a.k.a. Quincy Gary does that all the time. I'd like to see Ty maybe do that a little bit more off the ball. Um, they've rebounded really well. I I agree they need a four-pointer. That's a fair point. Uh, but I just don't understand, like, like what is the definition of one-dimensional to you when you're going to come in here? Like, you're, you're going from freak-out level one to freak-out level ten over a seven-point loss at Tennessee. This is the same the team road. that scored. Yeah, this is the same team that scored 98 points against a pretty good FAU team earlier in the week. So I just I I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> hey Ryan. Correct, hey Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> hey Ryan. Relax. All right. I'm not insult uh, insulting. I feel like I'm I'm insulting a broader audience rather than one person. <laughs> Me going after Jeffrey. Jeffrey, have I insulted you at all right now? I don't think I'm insulting. You know, I'm just questioning your your thoughts. A healthy debate. That's what it is, in my opinion. Maybe it's a little unhealthy with the way that my yelling or neck injury or whatever. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, uh, I like to see. See, Jay, Jay's got the perspective here. That, yeah, I, I don't know if they lose by 20-plus last year because I think they could make some threes and kind of uh, stick in the game. I think Matthew Meyer probably keeps this within 20 last season, if we're being honest, if you want to call back to the last episode. Um, but uh, I think Ryan needs to relax. Um, Definitely. I mean, uh, if you guys are new to the podcast, uh, it's, I'm not insulting anybody. That's the thing. Uh, it, I'm insulting Ethan's the mid, the Midwest. <laughs> this is easy thing. I don't know if you put up broads. He says, I want to go on record saying the line of basketball loses two games and conference. And I am not sure which two, but I'm sticking with two. I think they probably go. What do you think right now in the big 10? 14 and six. I think that would probably be good. 14 and six would be fantastic well I the big Ten's it. just not i don't think it's I very good at all yeah but you, it's still hard to win on the road when you look at the road games here purdue uh michigan northwestern ohio state jason loves michigan state maryland penn state wisconsin yeah they do have some pretty tough road games that'll be tough but you know uh jeffrey said that's two losses to ranked teams i would like to think we got more than just shannon running downhill or just isolated all day long. Jeffrey, are you watching the games? 
All right. Uh, on to Terrence Shannon. Sure, let's go. Can we have a serious uh, discussion about that. We really is, just... Do you think that's what Illinois' offense is? Also, yeah. by the way, I would like to see more isolation with the mask. Especially with some of those matches. In this match, in this game. and it There wasn't. really wasn't. There was like four instances where he actually took the shot. I think you got to go to Jay Wright really, really wanted them to go for it. Like, keep keep giving it to him. Now go, now go, now go. Who was, but, who, was Ziegler guarding him most of the time? Yeah, that's disrespectful. I mean, he's a great defender, but he's 5'9". Yeah, should have. But might I mean, as well whoever, if he put his hands and he weren't at one foul. The, see, the, the, the biggest problem with the Tennessee game was the fact that Coleman went three for ten. Right. I mean, if Coleman knocks down a few couple more threes, they, they got a do has to be more honest with him. And then you can get guys like Damask and and Shannon or not Shannon, uh, Rogers and stuff to post up and not have to worry about a do coming over and just throwing it into the seventh stand, seventh row. Huh? Anyways, you watch the game a few times. Do you have notes? I'd like to see some notes. Um, and also, I, I just don't think that even if I rewatched it, I don't think I would come away thinking that Illinois' only offense was Shannon running downhill and isolation all day long. Like maybe, maybe it was in this game more than than others. But I also think you have to realize that Tennessee probably forces them into a lot of different things they might not normally do. Uh, but I just think that there's too many conclusions being drawn from one game, and uh, I think we all need to relax a little bit. But I also will say I will be on everybody's side if they lose to Missouri. So uh, yes. we can't read this comment. The last part, at least. Um, you know, you know, we're we're taking we might not even be talking about sports right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, Cindy says the game was rigged. Yeah, I just I, I don't know. There was definitely a problem with the when the officials were making some of the calls, I think that was questionable. Certainly. It, uh, absolutely. Definitely. Uh, there was, there was no flow to the second half. Tennessee had six of, more free throws and Illinois had two more fouls. So it's tough. I think the rules kind of suck too. Jeffrey thought the officiating was fine. So I believe nothing in what he says. My I was on a text chain with my buddies on this game, and I don't remember how many times we were complaining on the refs. Yeah, um, I think a ten minute stretch was pretty bad. Yeah, I, if you if you were an Illinois fan and you weren't upset with those calls that were made during that stretch, then yeah, you're not you're not a real fan. Uh, go watch the team is standing outside the three line, not even moving. My dogs are being stupid. Uh, every time Illinois had a lead, uh, they would whistle Illinois. Every time Illinois made a run, they would start blowing whistles. Why don't you take that to Alex Jones, see what he thinks. Anyway, this is the longest you've ever gone without getting into any of the players. Shout out to the people in the comments. Uh, it's a good time. You know, friendly, healthy discussions. I don't see... Anything that's wrong with what just happened in the first 38 minutes of the show. Um, if I insulted anybody, I don't apologize because I think if you're getting insulted by a YouTube stream, you should, you know, turn it off and breathe. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Certain calls. I just think the timing on some of them were, like, some of them were just, come on, let there be some flow to the game. But I'd like to see the first half, second half breakdown of the, of the foul calls, but um, I don't think I have that. So there you go. What's going on? I don't know. Are we getting into the players? I mean, it's almost 40 minutes already. Yeah. Terrence Shannon, uh, 37 minutes, 5 of 16, 1 of 6 from 3. Perfect from the line, 11 of 11, 22 points, 4 rebounds and assists and a block. Um, Got to make more threes. Uh, Damask had a rough game, 33 minutes, 2 of 11, 0 for 5 from 3, 2 for 2 from the line, 2 rebounds, 1 assist. Rogers, 21 minutes, three points. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, all from the free throw line, three for four from the line, three rebounds, two assists, one steal, three or four from the line. You got to like that. Ty Rogers is looking good from the free throw line. Yeah, 58% of the year. I think that's actually a win. Seven for 12 looks so much better than 58%. But I think he's made like five of his last seven or he's something. He's feeling it now, folks. Don't let him get hot. Uh, yeah. But this is part of why I kind of – 
told everybody to relax and take a step back and maybe think about uh, how this there was some outlier stuff in the FAU game. It's Terrence Shannon and Marcus Damas going seven for 27 in this game and uh, one for 11 from three and 13 for 13 from the free throw line. The fact that Shannon had 22 points in this game is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's that does it's not, it's not, it's not great. And I think everybody kind of felt good at half because, you know, Shannon and Damas were struggling and they thought, you know, maybe they'll get it going. Um, and then, and then he kind of thought about like, I think it was like the under under 16 timeout. I went to the bathroom and one of the buddies like, how are we feeling? And I'm like, not good. I just, there was a feeling about it, like connect, you know, hadn't played much in the first half. Um, Illinois really didn't have a, have an answer for him, but then I looked at connect stat lines. It was pretty much the same as Damascus. So, uh, or not Damascus, uh, Gary A's. So, I mean, he had a good game. Quincy's but better confirmed. I, it, the thing is that that Tennessee just their distribution is is crazy. 14, 21, 11, 12, 12. And nine. the assist numbers too. Um, yeah. Illinois had nine assists. Tennessee had 21. Uh, I think Illinois. 21 on 27 shots. I also don't think that like point guard play determines your assist numbers. I saw a lot of people say, look how many more assists they have. Guess what, guys? They're six foot seven forward. Josiah Jordan Dame had seven assists. That's the same amount of assists as their two guards had combined with Vescovy and Ziegler. So I don't know. Yeah. I I want to get into a bit of a Moretti discussion as well, just to kind of circle back on that. Um, because I think it's crazy that we're just assuming that their offense would be so much better if they had a six foot point guard who can't play defense. I don't I, know, whatever. I think uh Ziegler would have embarrassed Moretti this year. I think Moretti and spots. Ready in spots like yeah. Curbelo in spots would be great. Yeah. yeah. But but I also um, think Curbelo, uh, you know what Curbelo does that Moretti we haven't seen Moretti do? He steals, get steals defensively, make plays like that. But uh that's a whole different discussion I, for another Moretti, day. Do we have any there's no time frame on Moretti right now? Is maybe there? I feel like since that's the case, maybe January or February we'll see him. Um, Luke Goody, 23 minutes, two of five from three, two for two from the line, eight points, seven rebounds and assist, two steals. Um, he was probably my runner up for player of the game. I thought Luke played really well. Before you get into this next part, can I just say this might be the worst YouTube comment in the history? And I'm glad that this guy is not in our chat. Yeah. Uh, so I was watching the post game presser, um, and, uh, at Chad, I don't even know how, how that is wrote Luke Goody, who must think he is a second coming of Larry bird, which me is not stands in the corner waiting for a pass. That's it. Ball is in the air and he stands there. Doesn't crash the boards. He led the team in rebounds. Yeah. I'd like to make another point. I don't think this guy watched Larry bird play. <laughs> Larry bird was a pretty good playmaker, like maybe underrated as a playmaker. So, uh, he's wrong about that because Goody had eight and seven. I think if you can get an eight and seven game from Goody, you'll take it. Any I thought day Goody was week. for having two. He airballed two threes <laughs> and and still shot the ball well. Um, I mean, Luke Goody's game plan is not that's that's what he does. Terrence Shannon, Damask, they try to drive. If they can, they could kick it to Goody. He and he still managed to get eight rebounds. So yeah, do you want Goody? Rebounds. Does this guy want Goody? Holy like smokes, dude! Really close to the basket on every shot. I, I don't know, but also, yeah, this guy obviously never watched Larry Bird play. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jay says Tennessee fouls constantly. Kind of reminds me of a football team on defense who grabs and holds about every play. Yet refs can throw a flag, can't throw a flag on every play. The, I Tennessee looked very handsy. Um, Coleman complained about trying to rebound and being held down every time. Uh, if but you yeah, establish I, yourself as a physical team, I think they let some stuff go. And I think that's what Tennessee is. And also uh, the football team that holds on and grabs and holds on every play. That's every bears player in the secondary uh, at corner outside of Jalen Johnson. Anyway. Hey, Hey Ryan, how far behind are you? You're like 20 minutes behind dude. Catch up. Uh, <laughs> Ty is such an offensive liability. I think if Ty is not rebounding on offense, 
and not crashing and making some shots underneath it is a bit of a problem. But I think he's so good defensively and such an important part of what this team is. Yeah. This team is probably a defensive first team in a lot of ways. But my thing is, it's not like Ty didn't play 38 minutes in this game. He played 21. He played yeah. as much as a, as a guy off the bench. Luke Goody played two more minutes than him. So I, 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 he's not he's not getting he's not getting offensive juggernaut minutes. So I don't think we need to worry about it as much. So um, Harmon, 12 minutes. Is that right? 12 minutes. Four points, two of four. Uh, missed both threes. Like I said, he had two rebounds that were both offensive, which is nice to see. Um, Harmon still is playing well. I think one uh, of those threes went in and out, didn't it? Yeah. Illinois had it seemed like so many of those, and and Tennessee had so many bounces like that. It was I like how Tennessee that Tennessee had a few shots in the first half that were in and out. I think it kind of flipped. Yeah. Um, Danger four minutes, two points, one for two, three rebounds, a block. We talked about him um, a little bit. I'm not sure why he didn't play much. Uh, it didn't make a whole lot of sense, but. Brad seems to do that sometimes. So, I mean, he even said afterwards he needs to figure out how to get Danger and Coleman time together. So, it can uh, be addicting to play the old guys as much as possible, though. Like Gary A. Hawkins, just keep those guys out there because you trust them, even though obviously Brad trusts Coleman, but should he in every situation? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, DGL, one minute, one foul. Yeah. I don't like DGL is much more talented than Moretti, and we just expect. <laughs> because Moretti's been here a semester longer that he's as ready to play. I don't know. I, I get the element that they need the passing, but I think you're putting a lot of a lot of pressure on Moretti if you're using him as your point guard in big spots of these games. Like if Moretti can be back by the Fairleigh Dickinson game at the end of the year, that would be great because you get some minutes from him. Um, this Ryan guy is really offended. That's that's <laughs> you, you seem kind of soft, but you know whatever. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I somebody smoking crack laced with testosterone. How the hell would that even? <laughs> could somebody still be alive after that? I mean, I don't know. That's kind of weird. That's also just a weird reference to make. It seems like maybe you've done that, but whatever. Um, I had like 250 milligrams of caffeine earlier. Um, uh oh, which is pretty normal. I think that's a pretty. It might be 150 how much I had, but it's also hours ago. So I actually came into the show pretty tired. But then when I see some of the comments is just, <laughs> you know, fired. some of them are so insane. And, and when you have fired, somebody that, yeah. that just, you know, gets as offended as Ryan does, it's tough. You know, it's tough. Um, I don't know what we're going to do if Ryan stops listening. I think we might have to quit doing a podcast, but I just think that uh, it's it's tough. Uh, Cindy says, I think the mask tires out from fighting to get the ball up the court. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they actually went to Gary late in the game, which was – Interesting to me. Uh, Jeff says, I don't mean to batch, but damn, this team can be so much more if they run an actual offense, but we haven't been. Uh, I mean, I don't know how long you've been watching Illinois basketball. I assume for a long time, Jeffrey, but this is Brad's offense. It is a motion offense. Sometimes it gets defense. It's hard to run motion. We will complain about it. We have complained about it. But I don't think you do it in a seven point loss at Tennessee. And now, Brad if they would, Underwood, Brad Underwood was the head coach of the I'm number one the offensive nice. efficiency team in 2016, 2017. He also had three very good mid major offenses and got to the second round twice as Stephen F. Austin. So he came in with a very good resume offensively. I think overall he's been good at Illinois. He's, they've been top 100 in offense every single year, uh, including f- three years in the top 30, including this year, and then one in the top 40 um, in efficiency. I think there's some shortcomings. I think there are years where they're really, really good from uh, two, and there's years where they're good from three, uh, and it's kind of hard to put them both together. They were able to do that in 2021, a.k.a. why that team went 24-7 and seven and was a one seed. Um but yeah, that's you know maybe there's a personnel issue if if that's you know maybe this isn't the proper per- like this has got to be the most unique group of players that Brad's ever had to coach. You look at all the length, you look at all the different skill sets. Yeah, 
There's a lot going on there. Well, that's I mean, you can if you can have Damask score 33 one game, you can have Gary A score 22. I, I mean, Illinois has options. Here's another problem. Like Damask kind of plays like a Jalen Pickett role in some ways, maybe a little less playmaking. But like Penn State pretty much has strictly like shooters around him. Like Illinois yeah. has another guy. Like Tarek Shannon is another guy. I know Seth Lundy is a good player at Penn State last year and did other things, but like Andrew Funk and a bunch of those other guys, those were just shooters and guys that got to the rim and got rebounds. I think Illinois personnel wise is kind of similar to that, but not entirely. There's other guys that have to create or make their own plays. And I think that it's kind of hard to to run a bunch of sets when you have this kind of personnel. But guess what? There's a very good chance that I'm just an idiot and uh, Brad's an idiot too, but probably not. <laughs> yeah. I think Brad Underwood knows a little bit more about basketball than we do. And I think Jeff Alexander might, maybe. That's close. No. But seriously, <laughs> all those guys know so much more. They've forgotten more about basketball than any of us know. So let's, you know, let's all take a step back here. Positive Ethan. Here we go. Uh, other quotes and notes. Uh, we talked about Tennessee, 21 assists on 27 buckets. Pretty pretty good. Considering Illinois had nine on 23. Uh, again, I mean, Jeff, see, like some of this we agree with you on. All right? Calm down. Um, Jeff's not getting all offended like Ryan. You know, give him <laughs> uh, Illinois get, got out-rebounded 34 to 43. Um, they did take 36 threes. We've talked about it. Underwood said, quote, most of them were pretty good. I felt great about it. We were plus nine from the line a half. If that's what they're going to give you, we have good shooters. I'm great with it. I think Brad needs to reevaluate how good his shooters are though. I, I think you're wrong. <laughs> uh, Illinois, if they, if Illinois shoots the ball well, the next three games, they're going to be, Top 175 in three-point percentage, which is good for a team that isn't supposed to be th- – uh, like all the good three-point shooting teams are, you know, really good teams. And, uh, you know, I, I lost my train of thought. I'm losing it. I'm just thinking about <laughs> – That's because we're an hour into this already. Facebook, the Facebook dust-up. I can't wait to talk about it. Uh, oh, did you put that on here? Because I did yeah. not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cindy said – Who, who else would put it on? A quick <laughs> you said add it to me. Uh, Ryan said, don't worry, Ethan. I'm not offended, and I'm not going to stop watching. I'm in. All right. All right. Props to you, I guess, you know. Uh, Appreciate you. Just, uh, Rick I, Barnes. I Rick just Barnes can't, after can't the game. Stop talking Shh. about it. So. Rick Barnes after the game, and you want to know how Tennessee was doing. Uh, he said, quote, this is the most focus, knowing that we had to do this on the defensive end all season. The line I challenge everything you do. So, uh, he he thought that his team probably played their best game this game. So calm down, folks. Um, Brad talked about three fouls and four hundred twenty six fouls, tail of two halves. Um, Underwood was asked about the three game three game stretch on the road and what it taught him. He said, "Quote: We're a really good team." He said it like six times. We've got a really high ceiling. This is a brand new team. We're really good. We're really high character. I love our ceiling. I think it's not even close to being touched. I think we have a chance to be really good. And I never say that, you know, me. Yeah. I think you do say that, Brad. I think that's a lie. Um, and then Ethan got it called immature on Facebook. We'll so. get there. Well, hang on. I oh, think that was next. One thing that I will say is that I think it's pretty easy for a team to wake up at home Saturday national TV against another good team. That's an, an easier game to get up for than what they were doing at Maui or at North Carolina. Uh, you know, North Carolina also made like 30 something free throws against them. So you want to talk about getting screwed by the refs. North Carolina was plus 22 in attempts from the line of that game. And TBA is like the worst setup ever for an arena, but it holds a ton of people and they are loud. So, um, I mean, that, that is a great atmosphere to go play in before you start, you know, big 10 play. So, uh, Jeff says, just talking ball, we may have differences, but why get mad? I just think Brad struggles to get guys in the right place and is stubborn on it. I don't think stubborn is right, yeah. anybody's mad, but I think just the jumping to conclusions part where like he can't ever be an elite coach because of this is like stupid if you look at the results. But, um, I don't know, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. We got another comment here. Ryan says, go back and look at how many non-conference game 
games Tennessee loses at home, almost none. They beat number five Arizona there two years ago. I think they announced that they've won 25 home non conference home games in a row. Yeah, that Arizona team something maybe like that. So was uh <laughs> was a one seed that was the Benedict Matherin, Kirk Creesa, uh all of those guys, I think, was that was that team. So yeah. Maybe not though. Maybe I'm wrong. Hold I'm gonna on. go get more water while you talk about Facebook or whatever you're gonna talk about. That was yeah, 77, 73. Yeah, that was the that was the really, 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 really good Arizona team that went uh 33 and four. So yeah, that is Tennessee's a tough place to play. <clears throat> All right. I don't know what this comment means, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Hold on. So Facebook, you know, I've had my, my, my fights in the past on Facebook or not even fights. I don't usually comment on it, but the Illinois fighting Illini nation, uh, Facebook group. It's, it's a tough scene out there with people trying to talk ball. It's tough. Um, but this, uh, this guy name is Andrew, I guess. Uh, he, he said on Facebook during the game, this was probably the, middle second half uh quote worst we've played this year turnovers bad shots not rebounding etc tennessee isn't really playing that good it would be well uh just capitalizing on our mistakes the fouls are fouls i know people are blaming the refs but we just aren't playing smart and i would say this comment is tough i think it's unfair to say tennessee wasn't really playing that good also it's well by the way Andrew, um, and I, th- I don't think you can look at this game. Like, I think Illinois probably played better in this game than they did against Marquette, right? I mean, they only stayed the Marquette game because of Damask and Goody. Like, overall, I think they played better in this game. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'm forgetting things. I, but there's also some, I mean, the Oakland game, did they really play that well? I mean, they were better in this game than they were in the Oakland game. I think it's unfair to say it's the worst we played. All I did, this is the middle of the game too. So all I did was just make a comment. You know, I'm not being 100% serious. This guy's a, you know, a, 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 you know, whatever. He's weak or whatever. I don't know. Apparently he's a Packer fan too. He's commenting on this like, yeah, I don't want, I don't like that that's a thing. Uh, but I said, please watch more basketball. You know nothing. And yeah, I sound like a dick. I mean, obviously <laughs> it is what it is. But I just feel like he was wrong about almost everything. And it was just like, come on. And then this Todd guy joins in, by the way. If your profile picture is the Utah Jazz logo, I mean, I have to go after that. Uh, but he said, okay, dipshit. Um, I said, the Jazz fucking suck. Uh, he said, yes, they do. He said, my golf swing needs help. I said, it does. Do you know anyone? Then he said, LOL. So I got him. I got him back. Um, so he's in with me there. And then this guy that said this responded and said, what did I say that wasn't true? And I said, Tennessee definitely played well. Because like I think Tennessee played well. Um, this guy. <laughs> this comment here is funny. Uh, you said I know nothing and need to watch more basketball just because you have a mediocre pie, which is that's fair. That's fair. Um, doesn't make you. Know- I was offended. He called us mediocre. Yeah, who cares? Uh, <laughs> doesn't make you more knowledgeable than me in basketball. I think it it doesn't on the surface, but I think if we really you know got into the the nitty gritty of the whole thing, I don't know. I mean, you if you think Tennessee didn't play well and you think that. That was the worst Illinois played this year. I think that's a, that's a tough tough opinion. Uh, nothing I said was false. That's when you know this guy. I mean, come on, what is this guy doing? Uh, uh, nothing I said was false or is a sign of my knowledge of basketball. Yes, it is. It was a statement. Statements aren't facts, you idiot. Um, your comments just make you look like a, an immature idiot. That's that last part's t- so true. Fair. Yeah. But and then I just said mediocre. Wow, burn. Um, <laughs> and then this Ray guy, this Ray Scott, whoever this is, uh, from Lincoln, Illinois. So shout out to him. Was that comment needed? Question mark. Helpful in any way? Hockey is stupid. I don't believe this, but just saying. Okay, that's all I said was okay. Um, then this Andrew guy called me a tool. I am far from a tool, folks. Far from. Yeah. It. yeah. All right. Uh, fine. <laughs> Ryan said that comment is offensive to actual mediocre podcasts. I just, I find it interesting that I pretty much that Chappelle Jiff from uh, the Chappelle show, whenever he's in the, 
in the uh, in the White House in the conference room and he knocks over the water and then runs, you know, that type of thing. I pretty much just dropped a nuke by saying one thing and everybody gets all like that's why that you Facebook did, group did. is so stupid. Yeah, you did make everybody mad with one comment. I just don't like, you know, I just, I'm only in that Facebook group so I can see I love to come across the really stupid comments from time to time. But uh, yeah, I just, I, I'm you know, just surprised you, know, you actually respond to them. I I usually respond with very like I just take one thing they say and I'm like, hey, the jazz suck or <laughs> mediocre. Wow, you got us there. Uh, I think there's a lot of evidence that would suggest that our podcast is better than mediocre. Uh, but hey, slightly everybody's opinion, better. Slightly, very slightly. Yeah. Um, but I think there's certain podcasts out there in the Illini world that uh, you're not going to get there what you got here today. <laughs> you're not going to be able to get into brawls with the hosts. And That's then, true. And, and then we're all cool after that. That's like, true. I'm sure I'm sure if Werner was mad at a comment, he would probably block it, right? I, I, don't, I don't watch his stuff, so I don't know. But I'm just saying, I feel like some of those guys – who are such uh, journalists would love to silence the uh, the public. <laughs> so the harsh quotes there. Anyways, I think if somebody calls himself a journalist. I don't. I don't love that. Like in a serious way about <clears throat> basketball. Yeah. So Illinois ruined my eight-hour trip to Tennessee. Had to You're not saving the back. world by writing about basketball. Uh, they suck. Um, I wish that they were good and Brad could coach. Now we got to play Colgate and probably lose. So yeah, Jeffrey, I, oh, I said sorry. I bad, I bad, I, I never disagreed with you per se, but I think it's unfair to say that he makes zero adjustments ever and that he's never going to be an elite coach because of that. That's the part that I had to address. Um, and honestly, it's an absolute joke that Brad has never come on this podcast because after my thin ice comment, I feel like I've defended him more than almost everybody. Um, you and, definitely have. You actually get mad when people are talking bad about him these days. So. And and then Brad does not come on our podcast because all the people doing the talking for him in the media relations department won't tell me the truth about why he won't come on. Like, be honest for once, guys. Jesus. Oh, we want to allocate his time so he can talk to Jeremy Werner for the 40th fucking time. Who cares? <laughs> anyway, uh, by the way, this when this podcast inevitably dies in the next like 10 years, yeah. Uh, I'm putting this episode on Mount Rushmore. I think this is a good episode. I think anybody listening to this is going to enjoy this. I really do. I think it's a long one. I mean, we're over an hour in and we're just getting yeah. into the preview. So I feel like, you know, this is a good episode for everybody. Hopefully everybody uh, hits the like and subscribe. We're at 411 subscribers. Ooh, um, 411. I don't know. Are we going to do anything to get to 500? Are we just going to sit here? I mean, it's really up to you. But uh, anyway. Know, um, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You know, whatever, whatever. Uh, Illinois seven and two up to 16th in the AP poll, taking on six and four Colgate team Sunday noon, Big Ten Network. Uh, no watch party for this one. Uh, I didn't realize this was a noon game, and also it's Colgate, guys. Come on, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. maybe we'll do the FDU game on the 29th, maybe. Uh, but we obviously are doing the Missouri game, so at least one more before the end of 2023. And then we'll have to reevaluate what we're going to do in 2024 with those. Uh, not reevaluate, but like, you know, look at the schedule. Pick which games we want to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, Illinois still buying FAU in the poll, which is hilarious. Uh, I think FAU's 15th. And I think the AP poll is probably at an all time low when it comes to credibility right now. It's so bad. Like, Gonzaga is still in the top 10 after losing to Washington. Uh, you have. You know, some of the teams that are still so high up there, it's like, come on, what are we doing here? I don't know. I just think the AP poll really sucks right now. Yeah, it literally means nothing, it seems like. It doesn't mean anything, but it, it's a shame that it's used so much and it's so bad. Uh, after games against Rutgers, FAU, and Tennessee, now they play Colgate. So. But I think to play at Rutgers and to play at Tennessee makes up for not playing a road game for the first month of the season. That's true, yeah. Uh, Colgate has played a couple of high major opponents this season. They're 0-2 in those games. Uh, they lost to... Uh, Arizona. Arizona. And Syracuse. And Syracuse. And Boom. Yale and Harvard. Those aren't high majors, but yeah. I mean... Uh, under season. Matt Langle, they've made the NCAA tournament four of the last five years. Of course, in 2020 or the COVID season at like the first COVID tournament or whatever. 
uh, they won like they went like fourteen and two and made the tournament because like they had like no co- like they might have had only I think they had only conference play that year, uh, but that still counts as making the tournament. Uh, this is probably his worst team in quite a bit with metrics, but I think their metrics will improve as they get into conference play. Uh, they have wins over Brown, Gardner Webb. Uh, is it Weber State? I feel like it's definitely Weber. State. Weber. Definitely, they're pretty good. So that's a nice win. Uh, Binghamton, Vermont State, Vermont. Vermont's also a pretty good win. So a couple good mid-major wins for them. I still think they're a very strong mid-major, but that doesn't mean Illinois should have a ton of issues with them. Uh, Syracuse, Yale, Harvard, Arizona, their losses. Uh, losing to Harvard, that's that's tough. Uh, they struggle with turnovers and offensive rebounds. Those are two big offensive metrics that have really held them back. Uh, FAU couldn't match the size of Illinois. I think this team might be able to. Uh Point guard is Braden Smith, not to be confused with Purdue's Braden Smith. He's six foot, <laughs> one eighty, also a sophomore, and had fifteen points, nine rebounds, three assists against Vermont. So nine boards uh, as a six foot guard. Um, then they have a uh, Nicholas Louis Jacques. Jacques, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> six four, one ninety five guard, junior, sixty two percent inside the three point line this season. Uh, Ryan Moffat, Moffat. Mo, oh, Mo it's Fat. Be Maffet. Maffet. That makes a lot of sense. 6'7, 220 <laughs> senior, shooting 40% from three, 24 of 60 <laughs> from deep. Uh, Keegan Records, I guess. I, I, 6'10, six, six, 250 senior, 22 points, eight boards against Vermont. Seems like a pretty inconsistent player. Uh, then Jeff Woodward, the big man, 6'11, 270 senior, nine offensive rebounds in the last five games, which is not that impressive. It kind of highlights their struggles to rebound. So, Illinois hopefully dominates the glass like they have in several games this season. Uh, Ken Pop numbers, Illinois is 24th in offensive efficiency, 14th in defensive efficiency. Colgate's 152nd, 143rd, so a huge advantage on both sides there. Uh, Three-point percentage, Illinois 32.3%, 109th in the country. Colgate 35.4%, 90th in the country. And then two-point percentage, Illinois 569 25th in the country. Colgate 50%, 184th. In the country, so Illinois with a huge metrics advantage in this game, and you look at Colgate's matchup against Arizona. Uh, they lost 82-55. They scored 25 points in the second half. Got outscored 47-25. Uh, only one player in double figures. Braden's been at 11 points. They made seven threes, um, and Arizona killed them inside. Arizona 26 uh, 26 makes inside the three-point line, and uh, 50, uh, 45 rebounds. Arizona allowed how many offensive rebounds in this game, folks? Zero, and they forced 18 turnovers. So I think Illinois matched up pretty well against Colgate. Based how are on they numbers. 6, 10, and 6, 11, and they don't get rebounds? Great question. Like I I mean, they're, they're 6, 11, 270-pound center, has <laughs> less than two offensive rebounds a game in the last five. So. Luke That's Goody crazy. is a better rebounder, but all I what I've heard is that Luke Goody just sits in the corner and looks like Larry Bird, which that's not even what Larry Bird looked like, guy. I mean, that guy's an idiot. I mean, uh, White and from Indiana, so people need to watch Larry Bird play. Uh, players to watch. Uh, yeah, players to watch. I I didn't do this literally right before we started, so I went with uh, DGL and Ryan Moffitt. Uh, I think DGL is going to get some running time, some playing time, get his feet, um, you know, re-wetted. And uh, I'm going to say DGL scores 15 points this game. Ryan Moffitt, I don't know. You told me to pick him, so I did. Hey, uh, he has some good <laughs> games occasionally. Uh, I went Dane Danger. Mm. Uh, I, you know, Danger, it's got to get more playing time against a team with this size, right? I would think that they go to danger a lot in this game. Do you think we see some danger Coleman action here? Uh, Brad said it. I mean, absolutely. He did say it. We'll see if absolutely. he remembers that he said it, though. And then whoever this records guy is, uh, he's been mostly efficient this season. So there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Predictions. Uh, predictions. As you guys remember back uh, during the summer, I said Illinois was going to lose this game. Uh, I completely switched that around, and I Illinois is just going to beat the crap out of them after losing to Tennessee on the road. Um, they're going to run a high efficiency offense where everybody's moving the whole time. They're going to knock down threes. I'm going to say they're going to go 42 percent from three this game. They win this game 95 58 in front of a sellout crowd against Colgate. You said they're going to lose in the preseason, and then you said 
that they were going to lose when we started the preview, and then you picked them to win by 37. Uh, my season preview, I do not have them losing this game. You said it initially, though, when the schedule came out. Yeah, and when we cowardly, did our just... Cowardly, cowardly backed off of it. Uh, I've been perfect on my prediction so far. Thank okay. you. Uh, Illinois, Colgate, Illinois 81, Colgate 65. I think it's... Yeah, they should probably win by more than 16, but I guess you never know. Coming off of an emotional game, couple of games. Um, Rutgers game was not that. They destroyed Rutgers. That game was easy, if anything. Um, yeah. Yeah, easy win by 16. Easy. It's going to be right. so easy. Around the Big Ten. Here we go. <laughs> trying to pull something up here. Hang on. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you find it? No. I I was just looking at a number real quick with the Big Ten. But anyway, um, Jeffrey wants me to give him an example of a team that runs this much isolated ball other than Purdue. I, What am I in school here? I mean, come on. I think they run as much isolated ball as like I think that their 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 motion offense turns into isolated ball because they can't find open shooters and Tennessee clogs the lane. Is I don't think Brad happens. Underwood is sitting there yeah. saying, "All right, stand ISO around, ball, guys. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> stand around." <laughs> yeah, at some point the players got to do something, right? Yeah. Um. All right, around the Big Ten, uh, Purdue beat Alabama. Alabama had a really good first half, but couldn't hang around. Uh, Wisconsin got smoked by Arizona. Uh, Arizona is, I think, the most elite team in the country, and I don't even think there's a close second in terms of numbers right now. Um, I think Purdue is there with them, but I just think that Arizona, as it, like overall, Arizona has played more consistent basketball, but also Purdue had a much much harder schedule. So if you look at uh, Arizona's, you know, opponents, they've played. Duke, they won at Cameron Indoor. That's an impressive win. Uh, they beat a bad Michigan State team, or what we think is a bad Michigan State team right now. And then obviously scoring 98 against Wisconsin. Uh, that's pretty impressive. I mean, they were lighting it up from three and uh, very efficient overall, despite the fact they missed 10 free throws in this game. Uh, but they play so many guys, and it's just – it's a shame that Illinois could could not have gotten Kylan Boswell. Kylan Boswell in this game, 10 points, 9 assists. Only turned it over twice, had the ball in his hands a ton. It's a shame. That's that's one guy. I think a lot of people would have a different answer for who Brad missed out on and who Brad lost. Kylan Boswell is the number one guy for me. He would be such a great fit on this team. And it sucks, but, uh, you know, we got to move on. Uh, Indiana got destroyed by Auburn. Indiana has a lot of flaws, but they're 2 0 in the Big Ten. So I don't know what. I don't know what that says about the conference that a team that is uh, 334th from deep and not a very good free throw shooting team. They give up. And a team, by the way, Indiana has kind of prided themselves on defense in the last few years, at least, you know, or at least, you know, maybe not last year, but a couple, couple years uh, before that, giving up 104 points neutral side to Auburn. That's tough. Um, especially when Auburn, I mean, Auburn just, I think they're good. Great. But, yeah. Yeah, and they definitely haven't been great. One big thing for Auburn is that they get Aiden Holloway, the freshman, having 24 points, making five threes. That's pretty big time when you get that from a freshman against a, a high major opponent. And I think Auburn just has so much depth. They play so many guys. Uh, they had 10 guys play double-digit minutes in this game. And uh, I think just, you know, Indiana has a lot of flaws. But they're 7-2 and 2-0 and two and oh in the Big Ten. Um, but we'll learn a lot about Indiana uh, when they play – Kansas on Saturday at home to be in Bloomington or wait. Yeah. I thought I had the wrong team, but pulled up anyway. Um, uh, Fran McCaffrey gets tossed as Michigan beats Iowa at home. I think the whole Fran McCaffrey act, I think even Iowa fans and players start to be like, okay, dude. Yeah. Did the, I, I don't know who it was, but the one player like threw up his hands. Like, what are you doing? I mean, that's, it's pretty embarrassing, honestly. Like, yeah. we obviously have reasons not to like Fran <laughs> McCaffrey, but like, dude, talk about making things about yourself, man. Just relax. Like, say what you want about Brad. I know he's been ejected a few times, but he doesn't act like a like a complete 
crazy person at every game like Fran does. Like, dude, the refs aren't going to give you calls if you're going to cry every game. It's that simple. We're talking about the guy who had a an embarrassing, albeit funny, standoff with a ref. Like, the guy's a – he's a fraud. Get to a Sweet 16. You want to talk about Sweet 16 pressure? Fran McCaffrey's never been to a Sweet 16. So, yeah. Um, Nebraska lost at home to uh, Minnesota and then uh, beat Michigan State. So, there you go, right? Around the Big Ten, yeah. There it is. Um, is this the worst Big Ten basketball conference has been in a while? Fair to say. I'll answer my own question there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> right? I mean, it's pretty bad. I asked it so you could answer it. It's pretty bad. It, it's not great, is it? They can't it say that it's the best conference in college basketball. It, do you not. think I, how how many times do you think Brad says that this year? Hopefully zero, but probably a couple times. <laughs> it's uh, the David, third. It's the third. It's probably the fourth best conference right now at best. Yeah, David said none of the Auburn players make good pros. Jeffrey says Michigan's gone to hell since Juwan came back. Yo. That Juan was he on the sideline against Iowa? I didn't even pay attention. He was not. No. Okay. I heard he was returning to the sidelines of the city because Martelli and the other assistant got into it because the subs were in and Fran. Well, Fran wasn't there, but they kept pressing against the subs down eighteen. So (laughs) good stuff. Um, yeah, the whole, the whole Jawan Howard thing is very, very weird right now. Um, I got duped by a fake account. <laughs> you did. You I, did. It's tough. I, the problem is, I was looking at my Twitter feed, and I have that fake Rothstein account muted on the Illini Twitter. But uh, since I was looking at the tweets from my feed, it just looked like a Rothstein tweet, and I uh, quote tweeted it with the Illini Twitter. I think that uh, he duped quite a few people. So. Yeah, but it wouldn't be surprised if Jawan doesn't get through. Like, if he's not like, this seems like there's a lot going on, especially with the rumors about some sort of altercation with the strength coach. Like, dude, Damn. you already hit a, an assistant of another team. Like, <laughs> at what point? Yeah, he's had some success in the tournament, but right. At what point? I kind of hope he comes back though, because I don't know if Illinois could beat Martelli's Michigan. Who knows? We haven't seen that. But uh, it's funny that. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I don't even know what's funny. I don't, I don't know. Um <laughs> All right. Um as always we want to thank Almo Steakhouse and Saloon for sponsoring us. Uh 700 East Broadway in Mattoon, Illinois. www.alamo-steakhouse.com. You can see all their specials everything on there. Um December the featured specials are a crispy chicken bacon and Swiss sandwich with a drizzle of honey mustard. Um, their special dessert this month is a uh, white chocolate raspberry cheesecake. Uh, Tuesday, if you're looking for somewhere to go to eat tonight, they have a grilled tenderloin tips, uh, eight ounces, eight ounce chunks of tender beef tenderloin tossed together with sauteed onions, mushrooms, and peppers. Uh, if you guys would like to be a sponsor for this wonderful podcast, uh, feel free to reach out to us on Twitter. Um, or you can email us at Illini basketball podcast at gmail.com. As always, we appreciate the subscriptions, the likes, the noties. Is that what kids call them these days? Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you can leave a review, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple or something, uh, we always appreciate that. We are pushing for 500 subs. So uh, if you can go to our YouTube, subscribe to us, we'd appreciate that also. So, Yeah. Uh, this comment here. What do you think? Are we surprised to see Northwestern in the AP poll? Uh, I mean, they beat Purdue and they've only lost a game, right? Who did they lose to? Mississippi State. Who was ranked at one time? Yeah, then they just lost to uh, somebody. Yeah, I think you sent me that. Yeah, they lost to Southern. They lost to Southern and Georgia Tech. Okay. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I, I think Northwestern is probably in the top 35 of teams, but I also think that like the AP poll sucks, so I don't think it's really going to determine that. Uh, they are 41st on Ken Palm, but I think there's a pretty clear top five in the Big Ten right now. Uh, I think Purdue, 
Illinois, Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Northwestern are probably those five teams. And I think on the outside looking in would be like, uh, I just don't trust Indiana at all, so I really can't put them there. But like Michigan and Nebraska are both high-level offensive teams that have struggled defensively. Uh, Maryland is a terrible team on offense this season. So I think there's a pretty big number of question marks around the Big Ten after the top five. So I think we'll learn more as the uh, conference goes on or the, as the season goes on. But I think the there's three teams in the Big Ten right now that have a ton of balance, uh, and that's Illinois, Wisconsin, and Purdue. Other than that, there's a lot of teams that are good in some areas and really bad in others, and there's just flat-out bad teams like uh, Penn State. So, you know, whatever. I can't believe Michigan State's 4-5. and five. Michigan State's 4-5, and five and their defensive efficiency is 18th in the country. Yeah. Like, they, they have two losses where you're like, come on. Nebraska is, is a, a fine, but still, you need to win that game. And James Madison is fine, but you need to win that game. Yeah, Nebraska just hit some shots down the stretch. Um, what do you think about Izzo not playing as five-star McDonald's All-American when his centers clearly aren't doing anything productive? Did, any, did anyone not expect something like this to happen, though? <laughs> uh, so uh, Kyle Houston um, went on the trip with us, and he is a Michigan State fan, and he is ready for Tom Izzo to leave. He said he's too old. Get him out of there. Thoughts? Um, does he mean fire? Yep. Yeah, Get him out of there. I don't think you do that. No. He thinks that he's old hat. Or whatever they say. Tom Izzo. All right. Here we go, guys. From 1998 to now. Yeah, but it's, an, it's 2023. Final four. He, will you let me finish? Almost 30 years. 22 wins Sweet 16, 33 wins Final Four, 32 wins National Champions, 28 wins Final Four, 19 wins Round One, 22 wins Lead Eight, 18 wins Round One, 26 wins Final Four, 22 wins Round One, 23 wins Round Two, 27 wins Sweet 16, 31 wins Runner Up, 28 wins Final Four, 19. This is this is longer than I thought. 19 wins. Uh, hey, you went round back one. 30 years. Hang on. 30, please. 25. Uh, 29 wins Sweet 16. 27 wins Sweet 16. 29 wins Elite 8. 27 wins Final Four. 29 wins Round 1. 20 wins Round 2. 30 wins Round 2. 32 wins Final Four. 22 wins would have been like a 3 or 4 seed in 2020. Uh, lost in the play, and that was a terrible team. 15 wins. 23 wins Round 2. 21 wins last year, Sweet 16. Yeah, they're 4 and 5. They've still recruited really well. He's adapted a little bit to the, the future of the game or I guess really what the game is now with the transfer portal. Like they don't have a lot of transfer guys, but they do have Tyson Walker. Who's a transfer. They've really developed guys like AJ uh, Hogard and Jay Nakins and Malik Hall. Um, but it, I think it's a tough combo when you have guys like Cohen Carr, Xavier Booker, Jeremy fears all coming in as, as highly touted freshmen. And you have an old school coach like Izzo. I just think that that's takes time to mesh and mix those guys in. And uh, they do miss Hauser quite a bit, I think. Um, it's Blue hard bad. to it's hard to win with a young team, and yeah. a lot of their guys are struggling from three. They have one mm-hmm. guy that has shot the ball well from three this year. And that's Trey Holloman. He's only taken twenty two. But you have Malik Hall twenty percent, Jade Nakins twenty nine point seven percent, Hogard twenty five percent, and Walker thirty three percent. It's pretty bad. It's not going to work in modern day basketball uh, when you're. 297th in three point shooting. And then they're also 138th in two point percentage. So it's not like they're like Illinois has been bad from three in different years, but they've been really bad from, from, uh, or really bad from three, but also good from two. And you can kind of, you know, and they're also bad free throw. Like Michigan State, nothing's going right right now. So, but I think it's insane to think that you just, you can't fire Tom Ezzo. Whether he deserves to be fired or not, you can't. He's been there for too long. He's at a way too long. It's kind of like Bayheim. You got to wait until he's ready to go on his own. It's a different level though, because Izzo is so much better than Bayhawk. <laughs> well, sure, but <laughs> you don't think he yeah, what? Uh I said sure, yeah. Uh Jeff says I'm just here to get Ethan riled up and talk some ball. Yeah. Uh if you guys stuck with us through this hour and twenty five minutes, we appreciate you. Uh stuck with us. This is like this is like a quarter of a Joe Rogan episode. We're not Joe Rogan. Could be. You wanna go do some stand up? Nope. You're going to talk to Shane Gillis and all those guys? 
Nope. Can you hear my dogs barking down at your house? Because they're barking. I'm like in underground. How much? Yeah, is I know. It, it, was, it was a joke. It was a bad Wrap one. This thing up. <laughs> All right. Um, good episode, I thought. Um, you know, bringing the heat, right? Um, no timestamps, so good luck listening. I mean, we really couldn't have timestamps though, because yeah, the same. This is all over the place. Yeah, I think it can be a good thing sometimes. Um, but don't fire Thomas. <laughs> and there, there's no chance they fire. Show some respect. Show some respect. It's like Bill Belichick, you know. Except the Patriots have had multiple bad years. I don't think Michigan State's had multiple bad years. Tell the folks bye. Thought we we're going to get to an hour 30, but all right. Uh, all right. Uh, that'll do for us. Uh, we'll be back after the Colgate job. Fair points and brats. Fair points. Um, we'll be back after the Colgate game. Did I say job? What am I doing? Uh, we'll be back after the Colgate game. Uh, Missouri watch party next week. And uh, we'll talk to everybody uh, in the next uh, week. I don't know. Check out the Twitter at Podcast Line. So, uh,